We're here today with uh, Ryan Phelan, the founder and CEO of DNA Direct. Ryan, you've been a social entrepreneur all your life. What, what is the driving force? What has driven you to create all these wonderful companies? Well, I think the, the driver, uh, Clarissa, is really about change. It's really trying to help um, you know, be a catalyst. And I've done it both with nonprofit organizations that I've started as well as for-profit companies, uh, mostly in healthcare, but in a few other domains as well. Well, probably the most salient one or most relevant to the, our conversation today was a nonprofit called Plain Tree, um, which is still in existence and going strong as a national, uh, U.S. national organization to promote patient, um, patient advocacy and patient-centered care in hospitals. And um, I was the founding executive director. And I'm going to go back almost 30 years. Um, and the idea of the, the patient taking control of their health care, being active in their health care, a family member helping at the bedside in the hospital was unthinkable. And, you know, sadly enough, even today, patients really being involved with their medical care, uh, and as we've talked about even in genetics, it's still, you know, um, new terrain. Well, I think the motivation was... Uh, really just trying to figure out how does an individual get to be part of the equation in health quick in healthcare and so yes is it paternalistic yes it's in in the past has always been very physician centric but um, what we were really trying to figure out is how does the physician the patient even the caregiver get to be more of equal partners in in some of the choices that are made about treatment and um, and health care um, you founded DNA Direct, now recently purchased by Medco. Um, you've developed uh, web-based tools for decision making. I'm curious, is the level of aggregation of information that patients need any different from the level of aggregation that physicians need? No, it's really not. And in fact, um, even sometimes the reading level is not that different because physicians all, uh, although they're very educated, they need information that they can scan very quickly. Um, and in, in some cases, we spend a lot more time working on the patient information. The physicians is quite easy because it's just how do you get them the, the two pages that they need about a genetic test that is going to make a difference for in their practice. So what do you think are the biggest barriers then for the adoption of personalized medicine? I think it's uh, probably around physician adoption of uh, these diagnostic tests. And there's a good reason why they haven't adopted them. And in some cases, it's been the science has been early. And then now we know in some cases that's no longer uh, the case, um, like warfarin and tamoxifen, where there's been FDA label changes. So now the trick is not the science. The trick is getting it, it actually to be part of the physician workflow. And in their short visit with a the patient, they now need to be thinking, oh my gosh, is there a genetic test before I give out this drug? That's, that's a new complexity in already a complex situation for a physician. Do you think that um, working through the guideline changes is a way to uh, change physician behavior? Um, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, you know, evidence-based medicine is... Um, the standard we are all looking for, and physicians are looking to the medical societies for guidance around this whole field of, uh, of molecular diagnostics. I think that um, in, in addition to needing that kind of information that it's in the guideline, they also still need to understand, is it really right for my patient? And is this going to actually change their clinical outcome and warrant ordering that test and, and paying for the cost of that test? Here in Canada, for certain genetic tests, they must be administered by a medical geneticist. How do you feel about that? Well, I think um, it, it's problematic on a couple of fronts, and I'd need to know more, but um, number one, there, there's a very small number of medical geneticists across the globe, so I would hate to see that as a rate-limiting factor. But secondly, um, Genetics is now ubiquitous in healthcare, and so you need that expertise of the oncologist, the cardiologist. Um, all these different specialties now need to have genetic, some level of genetic expertise, and I think it would be untenable to have those diagnostics only ordered outside by a medical geneticist.